Welcome to Peace Lutheran Church here in Plainfield, Illinois, as we are celebrating this first Sunday in Lent. During these 40 days of Lent, where we don't count the Sundays in those 40 days, we are in a season of repentance. And the reason why we repent is because we are preparing ourselves to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. And in that preparation, we realize that we're sinners. This first week in Lent, however, we're going to deal with the topic of temptation. Because temptation will come to us at any age and at any time. And every day, if we're willing to admit. So James, in our reading for today, is going to give us some insights about the temptation that we will be facing each and every day of our lives. Oh Christ, you walk the road our wandering feet must go. You faced with us temptation's power and fought our ancient foe. No bread of earth alone can fill our hungering hearts. Lord, help us seek your living word the food your grace imparts. No blinding sign we ask, no wonder from above. Lord, help us place our trust alone in your unswerving love. When lures of easy gain with promise brightly shine, Lord, help us seek your kingdom first, our wills with yours align. O Christ, you walked the road, our wandering feet must go. Stay with us through temptation's hour to fight our ancient foe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession. I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church 
that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from James chapter 1, beginning with the 12th verse. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter, Glory be to thee, O Lord. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent! And believe the gospel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Christ the Lord of hosts, unshaken by the devil's seething rage, thwarts the plan of Satan's minions, wins the strife from age to age. Hunger, sin, and death forever slams them in their steely Michael fought the heavenly battle, godly angels by his side. Warred against the ancient serpent, foiled the beast as so full of pride. Cast him earthbound with his angels, now he prowls unsatisfied. Long on earth the battle rages since the serpent's first deceit. Twisted God's command to Adam, 
made forbidden fruit look sweet. Then the curse of God was spoken, you'll lie crushed beneath his feet. Jesus came, this word fulfilling, trampled Satan's death defiled, for the brunt of our temptation, on the wretched tree he died. Yet to life was raised victorious by his life, a life supplied. God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our reading for today comes from James chapter 1, as James teaches us about temptation. Temptation is something that everyone is going to face, and if we're willing to admit it, we face it each and every day. During this time of Lent, Lent is a season of repentance, because we also have to admit from time to time we give in to the temptation. But James asks us to be a little proactive about it. Why? Because the desire, well, we could call it lust, and it could be anything or anyone. It's still a desire, and it's something that we have to struggle against. And so James gives us some insight from the desire to the mulling around of the desire, to the acting out of the desire. We need to stop it instead of giving into it. So the more we entertain the desires, the worse it becomes. Yes, stray thoughts will enter our mind, but do we, what do we do with those thoughts? Do we let them go or do we entertain those thoughts. Let me give you an interesting quote from Luther, and he was actually quoting one of the early church fathers, probably St. Jerome, when he said, Dear brother, you cannot prevent the birds from flying over your head, but you can certainly keep them from building a nest in your hair. What did Luther mean by this, using this idea from St. Jerome? Is yes, the stray thoughts will come, and they're like the birds flying our, over our head. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. It's part of your sinful human nature. So they will come. But now what are you going to do with those straight thoughts? Do you sit there and say, I, I can't believe I just thought that. How ridiculous. Or do you sit there and say, hmm, I wonder if I can get away with it. Notice there's a, a difference between the two. One says, get away from me, that bad, stray thought. And the other one begins the entertainment. That's the difference between letting go of a stray thought versus mulling it over and thinking, how can I justify this? Because that is the next step in temptation. When our minds take something that God has said, this is no good, and we try to sit there and think, hmm, how can I make it good? It reminds me of what Isaiah was trying to warn the people about. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, Woe to those who call evil good, and good evil, who put darkness for light, and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Isaiah was warning the people of Israel that, yes, people will try to take the things of God and reverse it. If God says something is good, they're going to say it's evil. Likewise, if God says something that is evil, they're going to entertain it and go, how can I make this good? So James refocuses us away from the world but to our own heart. Because 
It's in our own heart that we mull things over. Fair enough, there's a lot of evil in this world around us. And you can see the media complaining about the evil of this world around us. And your neighbors may complain about the evil of the world around us. But St. James points us to our hearts. Whenever we take those stray thoughts and entertain them, St. James is warning us, don't do it. Stay away from it. I like how the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 34, verse 14, Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. But very often our sinful human nature wants to sit there and say, I can handle it. It's only just a little. It won't bother me. Just a little bit here and there, or better yet, I'll just do it for recreational purposes. Well, we have gotten a memo from God. Avoid evil. Turn away from evil and do good. St. Peter also received this same memo from God. But notice what Jesus says to St. Peter as he tries to explain this memo to him. From Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. Wow. Jesus is saying to Peter, Satan really wants you. By the way, we get the same memo. Satan really wants you. Satan will fill you with tons of temptations. So what would St. Peter's reaction be to this memo from God? Well, you could say St. Peter's reaction was, I got it. But let's really hear what Peter has to say. From Luke chapter 22, verse 33, Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Notice where Peter focuses. He focuses on, you could say, his good Lutheran upbringing, so to speak. He basically says to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I got this. Don't worry about Satan. I'm going to remain loyal to you. But what does Jesus say in response to St. Peter's, I got this? Verse 34, Jesus says, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny three times that you know me. Ouch. It's interesting. Jesus looks him straight in the eye and basically says, you're going to fall into temptation. Now, I like the verse that I omitted, so let me bring it back. Verse 32. What does Jesus say to Peter? I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Notice what Jesus does. He already knew Peter was going to fall into temptation. But he also wanted Peter to turn, to repent, and then focuses Peter to his brothers, care for them. All because what? Jesus says, I have prayed for you. Does that prayer make a difference? The answer is yes. When we say the Lord's Prayer, by the way, it's the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Jesus begins that prayer by saying, Our Father. Our meaning, okay, so the Father of Jesus is also our Heavenly Father. Fair enough, but there's also another nuance to this word, our Jesus is praying our Father in this prayer because he is praying this every time we pray it. So when we pray our Father, guess who's praying this prayer with us? It's Jesus. Besides, remember, this is the prayer that Jesus gives to us. So we should listen to that prayer that Jesus taught and pray that prayer. 
You see, prayer is a beautiful gift from God for you. And that's where James wants you to be headed. James knows you're going to be facing temptation. You can't stop the birds from flying over your head. But we can shoo them away when they try to build a nest in our hair. But because our sinful nature wants those birds to build a nest in our hair, St. James has to give us a little bit more oomph, so to speak, to deal with our sinful nature. Verse 16, Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. So how do we deal with lust? How do we deal with temptation? James focuses us to the gifts from God. You see, what's driving our lust? What's driving our temptation? You could say it's covetousness. We're desiring something that we shouldn't have. And so what does James want you to do? To realize that the gifts that God has given to you are beautiful and perfect gifts. Trust in those gifts. This is God's answer to our temptation. He has already blessed you with our daily bread as we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. He has already given it to us. But our sinful nature is not satisfied. And St. James knows this. So he reminds us of the beautiful gifts that God has given to us. The gifts of love, the gifts of mercy, besides a gift of family. Maybe a gift of a job, an occupation. Maybe a gift of good Christian friends. God has given you many gifts. No need to be looking elsewhere. Instead, we look to the good gift giver. And who is the good gift giver? God himself. And when we realize that all good gifts come from God, why would we want to look anywhere else? Because we know that's not God's doing. We know that God doesn't want us to go that way. But when we confess that all good gifts come from God, as James is teaching us here, then our hearts, our minds, are focused the correct way. I will admit there are going to be times when we face temptation. And it's good to go to God in prayer. Pray the Lord's Prayer. For me, I always like to use the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Because it's a realization that, yes, God does give good gifts, and we need to be strengthened by God's strength so that we can turn away from the temptations of the world and keep our eyes focused on Christ and Him crucified. Because we do sin. We do fall away. But thanks be to God, through Christ and the forgiveness of sins that Christ brings from the Holy Cross, we are forgiven. And like St. Peter, we are restored. And like St. Peter, Jesus then tells us to go and encourage our other brothers and sisters in Christ because we are all, every day of our lives, facing temptation and the trials and tribulation of this world. We need that strength that comes from God. We need that strength that comes from being with fellow believers in Christ. And God gives us many gifts. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding will continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We confess the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, as we enter this Lenten season of repentance and renewed devotion, we pray that you would remember us according to your steadfast love and goodness in Christ and instruct and lead us by your Spirit in your ways so that we may repent and believe the gospel lord in your mercy hear our prayer almighty god preserve all catechumens and their teachers all children and their parents and every christian home from the assaults of the evil one as your son overcame satan in the desert by the word of god so also give us the victory through Christ and his word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of lights, from whom every good and perfect gift comes down to us from above, keep us from being enticed by our own desires to misuse your gifts in sin, and help us to use them rightly in service to you and our neighbor. Bless our leaders so that we may be governed wisely and justly for the good of this present generation and all those to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most high God, our refuge in every trouble, you have promised to hear when we call to you. We pray that you would command your angels to guard our brothers and sisters, especially Andy, Gary, Karen, Clyde, Tom, Jason, Rebecca, Haley, Sam, Jean, Pete and Linda, Jade, Kayla, Rose, Ken, Kathy, Kelly, Fred, Michael, Erica, and all who suffer in our midst. Keep them from every evil that can befall the body, mind, and soul. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Jesus, grant that balm and healing in your holy wounds I find. Every hour that I am feeling pains of body and of mind, should some evil thought within tempt my treacherous heart to sin. Show the peril, and from sinning, keep me from its first beginning. Should some lust or sharp temptation fascinate my sinful mind, draw me to your cross and passion, and new courage I shall find. Or should Satan press me hard, let me then be on my guard. Saying Christ for me was wounded, that the tempter flee confounded. O oh my God, my rock and tower, grant that in your death I trust, knowing death has lost its power since you crushed it in the dust. Savior, let your agony ever help and comfort me. When I die, be my protection, light and life and resurrection.